You are listening to pastthink.com audiobook. Please like and subscribe, thank you. Chapter 62 Yang and Gao are killed at the fall of the Fu Pass. Huang Zhong and Wei Yan compete to capture Luoqing. Zhang Zhao's advice is to use subterfuge. Write two letters, he says to Sun Quan. One to Lu Zhang, telling him that Xuanda has joined with us in order to capture Xu, and the other to Zhang Lu, suggesting he attack Jingzhou in order to cut Xuanda off from his resources. That way we will win back Jingzhou. To this Sun Quan gives his approval. Xuanda is now based at Jiaoming Pass. Here, his thoughtful and compassionate behavior, and that of his men have earned him support from the local people. However, when news comes of what has happened between Chao Chao and Sun Quan, he is troubled, and he seeks advice. Pang Tong recommends, write to Lu Zhang saying that Sun Quan needs your help against Chao Chao. This'll mean you can head back to support him. Also, say you need support yourself, let's say between 30 and 40,000 of his best soldiers, and a hundred thousand bushels of grain to manage the march back. If Lu Zhang does as you ask, we can then move to the next step. So Shuanda sends the letter by messenger. But when the messenger reaches the Fu Pass, he is intercepted by General Yang Huai. As soon as he finds out what the letter is about, he decides to accompany the messenger to the capital. When the letter arrives in Qingdu, Lu Zhang reads it, and is convinced of its value and truth. But Yang Huai says, don't be fooled. Shuanda has been doing all in his power to win over your people to his side. Now he wants your own troops. This man is dangerous, and you must refuse his request. Others also press Yang Huai's case, and in the end, instead of sending the 30 to 40,000 crack troops, Lu Zhang offers 4,000 elderly soldiers, and just 10,000 bushels of grain. When the letter arrives Shuanda is incandescent with rage at such an insult, especially because of what he sees as his efforts on behalf of his kinsmen. It is now that Peng Tong puts forward his plan. He outlines three alternative strategies. Attack Qingdu immediately, he says, or draw away from Qingdu the two top generals who will guard it, Yang Huai and Gao Pei, and kill them by pretending to be returning to Jingzhou so they come to say farewell. Or just pack up and go home. Your first proposal is too hasty, says Shuanda, your third too slow, so I will go with the second plan. Shuanda therefore writes again to Lu Zhang saying that he must return home. When news of this letter spreads in the capital, Zhang Song hears of it, and believes it is true. In great anxiety he prepares a letter to Shuanda lamenting that after all his efforts Shuanda is going home. He then offers to help seize the city if Shuanda will only attack. Unfortunately, before he can send it he is interrupted by a visit from his brother. The letter is discovered, and, when Lu Zhang is told of it, Zhang Song and his entire family are executed in the public square. Here was a man unequaled in understanding. Little did he think his letter would be leaked. Before Shuanda could be crowned as he wished. Instead, in Qingdu, he meets his bloody end. Alarmed by the discovery of a real plot and threat against him, Lu Zhang orders the passes to be strongly guarded. He commands that no one from Jingzhou should be allowed in or out. Meanwhile, Xuanda has arrived at the Fu Pass and invites the two commanders, Yang Huai and Gao Pei, to come and pay their respects as he departs. They, pretty sure he is planning something, decide to bring an armed guard with them and hide knives in their clothes intending to kill Shwanda as soon as they meet him. With two hundred men they descend into the pass and come to see Shwanda. Shwanda is forewarned of trouble, not least by a banner blowing over, which is interpreted by Peng Tong as meaning there is a plot to murder him. As soon as the two commanders come bearing gifts, Shwanda welcomes them, and then, pretending he has some great secret to share with them, orders their men out of the meeting. Immediately the two men are seized and the knives found on them. Kill them, cries Pang Tong. But Shwanda hesitates, not sure that this is right. It has to be forcibly presented to him that they plan to kill him and so deserve to die. Persuaded by this, he gives permission and the two men are executed there and then. As for the two hundred men, Shwanda offers them freedom or the right to join his army 
and in return is cheered to the rafters. It is then that Peng Tong springs the next step in his plan. He asks the 200 if they will help capture the pass through subterfuge by leading Shwanda's men into the fortification. The men are so delighted at not being executed they agree, and they lead the way. When the men arrive at the gate they call out for entry. Peering down, the soldiers inside recognize them, and the gate is thrown open. In rush Shwanda and his men, as well as the shoe turncoats. It is all over in a few minutes, for, realizing they are overwhelmed, the men of Shu all surrender. Not one drop of blood is spilt in the capture of the pass. When the news of the deaths of Yang Huai and Gao Pei and the fall of the Fu Pass reaches Lu Zhang, he is horrified. He is especially distressed that a kinsman should have done this. Huang Quan advises him to fortify Luoqing, as this will block any further advances by the enemy. And so he sends Lu Gui, Ling Bao, Zhang Ren and Deng Xian to guard the city with 50,000 men. Now when they are en route, Lu Gui says to the others that he knows of a Daoist called the Supreme Master of the Purple Void who lives in the nearby hills. He has the power to foretell life and death, says Lu Gui, and all manner of things. Why don't we go and ask his advice? Zhang Ren dismisses this. Men of war do not go visiting hermits, he says with great disdain. I totally disagree, retorts Lu Gui. After all the Master 15 has said, those who follow the way know the future. This Taoist may be able to give us some guidance. So the four men with their escort turn aside and ride up the mountain to the sage's hut. They are admitted to the Supreme Master's presence only to find they are initially ignored, and Lu Gui has to repeat his request a number of times before the Master picks up a brush and writes eight lines. To the left, dragon, to the right, phoenix. To the western rivers they fly. Young phoenix falls to earth. Sleeping dragon soars to sky. One makes it, the other fails. This is heaven's decree. See that when the chance comes, you take it. Or else you're landing in the nine springs of hell. Having delivered himself of this, the sage refuses to answer any more personal questions regarding their individual fates. As they return down the hill, Lu Gui says with some embarrassment, Well, I suppose you just have to listen to the words of these immortals. But Zhang Ren retorts, He's nothing more than a mad old man, and what he said was nonsense. So on they ride on to Luo Qing. As this is crucial for the defense of Qingdu, they decide to divide their forces. Ling Bao and Deng Xian set up two camps on the approaches to the city, while Lu Gui and Zhang Ren defend the city itself. By now Shuanda is approaching with his force, and a dispute breaks out as to who should lead the attack on the two outlying enemy camps. Huang Zhong has offered but is challenged by a young upstart by the name of Wei Yan on the grounds that Huang Zhong is too old. It almost comes to blows until Shuanda stops them, and simply says that they can each attack one of the two camps. This settled, Huang Zhong tells his men to rest and be ready to set off at the fourth watch of the night. However, Pang Tong advises Shuanda to follow them both with his own troops in case there is a further falling out. Wei Yan, having learned from his spies that Huang Zhong will depart at the fourth watch, sets off silently with his men at the third watch. Driven by jealousy, he decides that, having gained the time advantage, he will not only attack the camp he was given, that of Deng Xian, but start by taking Huang Zhong's target of the camp of Ling Bao. It is a disaster. Ling Bao's men hear them coming and spring a counterattack. In the end Deng Xian's men from the other camp also join the attack on the enemy. The foolish Wei Yin is about to be killed by Deng Xian himself when an arrow takes Deng Xian down, and the cry goes up, Old Man Huang Zhong has come. Riding into the fray, the old warrior attacks Ling Bao, who flees. Deng Xian is finished off, and the men of Shu are scattered. When Ling Bao rushes for sanctuary into the other Shu camp, that of the now dead Deng Xian, it is to find it occupied by none other than Xuanda. Ling Bao retreats rapidly and, taking only country paths, he believes he can make it safely back to Luoqing. But this is not to be. Wei Yan, realizing the trouble he is in because of his arrogance, has worked out where to place an ambush, and it is he who captures Ling Bao. 
standing before the troops who have surrendered, Shwanda says, men of Shu. You have families here. If you would like to join us, then do so. If not, then you're free to return to your homes. This news is greeted with loud and sustained cheers by the men. Only because he has captured Ling Bao is Wei Yen not cashiered. But he is made to publicly acknowledge his debt to Huang Zhong, who saved his life. To Wei Yan's consternation, Xuanda frees Ling Bao, who swears that he will go to Luoqing and try to bring the other two commanders over to Xuanda's side. Wei Yan protests loudly, but Xuanda replies, this is an act of benevolence and of mercy. He'll not betray me. However, when Ling Bao returns to Luoqing, he tells no one about his capture and release, claiming instead to have been a true hero who slew a dozen men and escaped. When news of the defeat reaches Qingdu, Lu Zhang is deeply troubled. His eldest son, Lu Sun, offers to defend Luoqing and, supported by other commanders, he sets off with his army. On arrival at Luoqing they confer with Lu Gue, Zhang Ren and Ling Bao. It is Ling Bao who comes up with an idea, the river Fu flows by and is very swift. Their camp is in the plains below the hills. Give me five thousand men with spades and picks, and I'll divert the river, and wash away Shwanda, and his army. As this work proceeds, Shwanda is informed of the apparent plot of Sun Quan to link up with Zhang Lu and encourage an attack on Jiaming Pass. On Pang Tong's advice he sends reinforcements to the pass, because if this were to be captured, he would be stranded. That night Pang Tong returns to his quarters only to be told that a stranger has come and is waiting for him in his rooms. What he finds is a tall, shabbily dressed man with badly cut hair. And who might you be, sir? asks Pang Tong. But he gets no answer. Instead the man simply lies down on Pang Tong's bed. Again Pang Tong asks, who are you? To which the man says, just wait a minute, and then I'll tell you what fate is about to befall the world. Stunned by this, Pang Tong meekly orders wine and food, and the man wolfs it down. Then he falls asleep. Now considerably annoyed, to put it mildly, Pang Tong asks for F. A. Zheng to come and advise him. Could this possibly be Ping Yang? asks F. A. Zheng, and he goes to have a look. The stranger leaps up and says, F. A. Zheng. I hope you are well. So who exactly is this stranger? Who indeed?